Ooh, that was suspenseful. Happy coffee time at 3 p.m. Different time today. Good to see you. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. There was a long pause there when I tried to get that technology started, and it was just that thing was going around and around, like keeping me in suspense. Good to see you, Magby VG. Hello, happy afternoon. It's such an odd time, but I'll tell you today, at least where I am in Connecticut, um, people were crashing like crazy. It was a crazy accident day. Uh, lots of reports, school buses getting stuck. It was like a black ice morning and people drive like lunatics without any regard for what might be happening weather-wise. Um, so I stayed in for a while. I didn't want to come out in the morning and take a chance at getting into a um, you know, crazy, crazy situation. But it is such a bleak, very, very white day out there. It's like a pea super. We might as well be in London right now. I hope it's nicer where you are. Um, I'm not getting any great light, but it's a good thing I'm not showing too many things that require color today because it is a bleak winter day. Very happy that you're there, though. I'm very happy we could catch up. Karen, good to see you. Good afternoon in Black Forest, Colorado. I love that name. Lisa, great to see you. Mom, you logged on. Great to see you. See, I was good, and I did what you said. I stayed put until everything kind of, until we hit above freezing, and then things started to melt, and it was, you know, a bit less, a bit less dangerous driving rushing to get to the decaf to sit. yeah oh take your time becky great to see you you haven't been on in a week or so happy new year to you too i hope it was a good holiday i hope the whole thing was good i have to admit this morning i went back to listening to my christmas music i don't know what it is there must be a crazy disconnect in my mind but it just seems somehow like when it's this time in the winter and it's so bleak i mean it's so dickens but what other word is there it's so um, depressing, you know, it's so hard to keep going and to stay colorful and animated and lively and inspired. And um, for me, I associate this kind of dead winter with Christmas and the holidays. And as soon as that's gone, it's all cat out of the litter box. I want to just run and go. And I don't have the energy because it's so miserable outside. So I think in a weird way, I put the Christmas music back on because I thought it's, if it's going to look like this, I better be hearing the songs that I love and see if that helps. It helped a little bit today. Ah, oh, dear. Linda, great to see you. Jersey checking in. I like your little snowman. Doreen, good to see you. Everybody's here. That's fantastic. Colleen, great to see you. I just wrote to Colleen, the penny rug master uh, up in Canada. And, you know, I... I have to change the photo for the, the thumbnail today because I put like a stock photo in that I had on my desktop, but I have a great book to look at today. Lisa, did you send me the link to the book on, what is it called? Um, something cloud, mag, mag cloud for the, this book. Where is it? Where is it? Oh no, don't tell me I lost it. I'm sitting on it. Lisa, did you send me that link or did Jennifer send me that link? I remember somebody sent me that link in one of our last talks, one of the main buddies and for the Crazy Quilt magazine, and I ordered it from Mag Cloud, like Magazine Cloud, and it came. Um, so I want to look at this today because this is a great issue with a lot of crossover to rug making. It's a Crazy Quilt magazine, but this particular issue, November 2021, is very focused on wool. In fact, it says wool crazy quilts. So they're doing some stuff with uh, penny rug, penny rugs here, but also wool applique. So a little bit of a distinction, right? But we'll look at that as our main, as our main food for this episode. It'll be a, a beautiful um, issue. Catherine, great to see you. And Linda, great to see you. April, great to see you. I, yeah, I am safe. I hope everybody's safe. It's just unexpected, isn't it? Corey, great to see you. Hello, hello. You know, and I was saying so uselessly to Jocelyn, who's so little in the back seat when I drove her so slowly to school. I usually give her commentary as we drive, which is pretty useless at this age, but I figure I'm planting some seeds maybe. And I kept saying to her, you know, when you are older and you are driving, you have to check the weather. You have to look and see what's going on because people are driving like bats out of Hades and getting in all kinds of collisions all over town because they, they have no idea that there's tons of black ice on the ground. And I'm just projecting forward to the day when she drives and I just never sleep, never at all sleep. Oh dear, not a good to see you. I did, it, it was hairy though, I have to say, it's not a good day. Pat, no, not new timing, Pat, just yesterday, I had like a, a bit of a pig's breakfast trying to log on, it just didn't happen. 
Um, so then today, when I really couldn't leave the house because of the weather conditions, I thought I better put it at the same time that I did yesterday because then at least we have some continuity. But no, my time is noon Eastern Standard Time. It's just yesterday was a technical thing. Today was a weather thing, and I wanted to come on because um, I'm not normally on on Thursday. So I wanted to see this through. Of course, we're going to have an episode on Friday night. That'll be our cocktail night this week. Lisa, oh, a crafter's grimoire sanctuary. I love it when you're on. I know I said that yesterday. I'm like a broken record, but I do. You say such smart things, and I appreciate it. It wasn't you. I think it was Jennifer, Lisa. I think it was Jennifer. Um, I just paid off my HSN accounts next month. <laughs> Hooking supplies. Fantastic. Fanta I know. It's, it's so hard to not keep getting stuff, isn't it? It's so tempting. And this is the time of year, at least where I am in New England, where we're not getting, like, obviously flea markets and yard sales. If there's estate sales, I, I'm not going to go. Go to antique centers and things like that. And then when you find cool supplies, you end up paying through the teeth for them. Whereas in the summer, there's more outdoor stuff and there's the chance of making a good score, finding some nice supplies, finding some treasures. It's just not the time of year for it. You end up going online um, and searching for stuff and buying stuff and hoarding stuff because some, it's something to do and uh, makes you feel like you're making progress on projects when you hoard that material, doesn't it? I'm, I'm the worst at that. Connie, great to see you. Happy 2022, so good to see you. Well, you know, speaking of hoarding random stuff, I was going through my spare room looking for something. It's like that U2 song. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Um, and I didn't found, find what I was looking for, but I found a bunch of other things that I completely forgot about and didn't even open from their boxes. And I thought, shame on me. So I wanted to show you a couple of the things that I turned up that I bought months and months and months ago that I absolutely love, but just immediately went into a tailspin um, and, and didn't do justice to. So I'm sure some of you have heard of the rug hooking artist Anne Eastwood, right? Because I know she did a lot of teaching and there's often things of hers up on eBay. And I bought a few because they're extraordinary. It looks to me of the things I have of hers. I have a couple more things of hers. This is a beautiful pillow. It's going to go right behind me, actually. What does Pat say? Pat says, I've been going down the wool applique rabbit hole since you began the discussion. Is there a worldwide shortage of freezer paper? Interesting. And how important is it? You know, I, I'm going to I'm also going to let Colleen answer that question because she's much more. She does applique rugs and penny rugs. I, I will just say for myself, I, I am not a freezer paper user. I know Beverly was giving us a lot of freezer paper info and she's very good. I am. I am. I think it's because I studied um, costume, right? Historic costuming construction. I'm a pins person, so I have never, for myself, gotten into the habit of using freezer paper, two-sided interface, all that stuff. I'm aware of it. I know it works great. I don't think to reach for it. I'm still in the habit of not. So for me, not important at all. I've been working on projects for this book and not using those things. I'm sure other people work different ways. And since we are making rag rugs, right, since we are working in a thrift craft, um, I think it's all good. But personally, for me, it's not a big deal. But Colleen, if you're there, chime in and, and let us know if you get into using freezer paper when you work on your wool applique patterns. You, she, I would defer to Colleen over me, right, because she does it a lot more than I do it, this particular genre. Let's see. Oh, oh, Escher, another great direction to go in. You know, it's a good thing you said that. And I decided, I don't know if you noticed, I mean, I forgot to post the link on this video. I am going to do the Escher, the tessellating class, not this month. But this month, I don't know what, I got to be in my bonnet. I don't know what happened, but I was sitting there spacing out, which I've got no time to do. <laughs> I started thinking uh, mid-century rugs, MCM, mid-century modern. And I put up, I posted a class that some people have already signed up for. Um, I've got to announce it and post the link and everything on Ribbon Candy Hooking. The Designing Light class this month is going to be Designing Like Mid-Century Modern. Because when you think about it, it's good. Isn't it good? And I wrote in the little um, tag for it, I wrote something like, it's not just about all of those overpriced pieces of furniture in these vintage stores, you know, that are ridiculously expensive. It's the whole look. It's the whole style. It's the, it's the silly putty. It's the, it's the geometric shapes that you pulled with silly putty into wacky boomerangs. It's good. And we can really cross mid-century modern style 
with whatever kind of rug making you're doing, whether it's hooking, punching, applique, anything, it's going to work. And it's going to work beautifully because the fusion between the traditional that we see most often with rug hooking and mid-century modern is a beautiful hybrid, right? It's a perfect hybrid. So I'm really excited about this class. I already started getting ideas of artists who I want to talk about in the class and show their work, talk about shapes, talk about the color palette, and mostly talk about how to how to make this cross between um, this very iconic and well-defined period of design and rug making because it can easily be done. So that's what we'll be talking about in that class. I hope it was a good choice for this month. We will get to everything, I hope, God willing. Um, but for this month, I thought that is a really fun thing, a nice clean thing to start off on. And when I look at the cover of any quilting magazine, not crazy quilting, but any traditional quilting magazine, everything on the cover is always super mid-century modern. Every craft is borrowing from MCM except rug makers. So I think we need to get in there and make our mark. I think we can really run with this topic. Thank you for reminding me. Next month, Escher, because I'll have time to tessellate. Um, I bet I missed a lot. Uh, Colleen says, I would use freezer paper, yes. Look in the grocery store or Amazon. I bet you have looked in the grocery store, right? Maybe it's like a local thing that's a problem. There's so many odd things that are just not available at this moment. Um, it's frustrating. Did you check Amazon too? Just in case I know not everybody likes to use Amazon for so many reasons. Um, but hopefully, hopefully it's there. Oh, thanks, Pat. No problem. I am really excited about it too. Oh, Colleen says also old fashioned butcher's paper. Same thing. Colleen makes great templates too. If you're doing penny rugs, not so much the wool applique, right? But you do like um, diamonds and circles and different shapes on that are graduated in plastic on a key ring. So that's the part of it sometimes that gets people, isn't it? The making patterns and things, that's not for everything, but Colleen sells all of these different kinds of templates. If you really don't like that part and you're not looking forward to that part, and that part is gonna be the kind of a speed bump that makes you not wanna try penny rugs and wool applique, then think about something like the templates because they are out there and the pre-cut circles are out there, of course. Colleen sells them, I sell them, quite a few people sell them. Colleen is in Canada, and I know a lot of you watching are also in Canada, so the shipping thing is always a thing, isn't it? It's always a thing. Joy, good to see you. Courtney was telling you about a wool jersey that, that I use. Where? Do you, um, well, now, Courtney was telling you about wool jersey that you use. I was, you know, um, Joy, I have those, the big balls of t-shirt material. Maybe that's what she meant. I have those giant, um, I just put them away, actually. What luck. Um, yeah, I have these giant rag balls I made from cut up t-shirts and cut up, um, yeah. You know, Jay, I think over um, near the door where, where the baby is, yeah. Yeah, I'll take one of those. I've got bags of these. If this is, thank you. Yeah. If this is what you mean in like uh, literally 100 colors. The August kit, if you check the August kit in Ribbon Candy Hooking, I think it was called, the heck was it called? Oh, boy. Um, something Padula. I think it was called T-shirt Padula. Um, it came with like a crazy amount of this, this stuff uh, broken, the T-shirt material already cut. Um, in three and five yard cuts, like it, it, a silly number. I couldn't like, I couldn't fit it in the bag. Um, and I've also been crocheting with this t-shirt material like crazy. I sometimes cut it in half because I like, at least when I'm crocheting, I like it to be under an inch just because my hand and the amount of difficulty it poses when it's super thick. Um, but yeah, if this is what you mean, I have tons and tons of it. And you could even send me a message if you want a certain color. If you want like, for example, blue, I could probably put something together with like 10 different blues. Um, whatever kind of color palette. I've got a lot of t-shirt material right now. It's like with the sweaters last year, I went like a cuckoo bird. Colleen says, maybe it's a thing now with folks trying not to use plastic. Oh, oh, I see what you mean that they're like, they're, yeah, snapping up all the peepers. So maybe it is. Everybody's super green right now, which is a good thing, but it's creating different problems, isn't it? Different problems. Let's see, let me keep up with you here. You all are on fire today. Is it the same as parchment paper? Um, butcher paper is brown, isn't it? And parchment paper is like that waxy, translucent white. I, I mean, in terms of function, um, for all intents and purposes, is it similar? Because didn't Beverly say before that freezer paper is sticky on one side? When you iron it, it will like iron. Will wax paper do the same thing? Yeah. 
Oh, okay, it will, Jay. Yeah. So wax paper maybe is the same thing. Just confirm for me. Um, wax paper and um, what was the other one we said? Freezer paper. Are those the same thing? But not butcher paper. At least that's a different right. color. Right. Hey, Courtney. All right. Wax paper is the thing. Remember when I put yeah. the leaves together? Yes, and yes, yes, I yes. The leaves in between. Yeah, yeah. Jay's saying <laughs> we do some fun stuff with the kids. Uh, with the wax paper, do you remember at school if you did this? I was in a Catholic school, so we did a lot of stuff that was quite dangerous with the nuns. Um, we'd get two pieces of wax paper, and you'd have to bring some autumn leaves in from your yard, which was no problem at any time of the year, and um, and put, put them in between the wax paper, and then you'd put the crayons into the back of, you know, the big box of Crayola, and it would shave out all these, like, tiny shave. And then you put the second piece of wax paper on and iron it, like we would actually iron it in class with the nuns. And people would certainly burn themselves badly, but it made this melted rainbow like a sun catcher. And then we'd bring it home, and Mom would put it in the window. You know, it was, it was fun. But that's that wax paper. Parchment is not the same as butcher's paper. Uh, these, oh, paper or freezer paper. These are waxy on one side. Excellent. Don't, you, uh, don't use... Um, something or parchment, wax or parchment. Don't use wax or parchment, Colleen says. And Karen says, I found some great wool applique patterns in a kit by Erica Cap Cap Capriu, okay, K A P R I W, called Everything's Blooming 30 Floral Wool Applique Quilt Blocks. Oh, that sounds beautiful. That almost sounds like a Baltimore quilt, doesn't it? Does it look like a Baltimore quilt? You know, Mom, you posted something, was it on my page, that was something like, Oh, what was it called? Because you said, I love, I just love saying this. Oh, it was boats. It was boats, wasn't it? It was like a wool applique pattern or a quilt pattern with like, I want to say 16 or 20 um, boat designs. Do you know what I'm talking about? That was a beauty too. It looked super difficult. But for boat people, right, it, it would have been an amazing pattern to go for. Colleen says, use wax paper to iron your dry leaves with your kids. That's a good use for it, right? Leave it at that. Uh, Erica Capra, that's easier to say. K-A-P-R-O-W. Excellent. Thank you. And good to see you. White freezer paper is what you need so you can see through. So everybody's doing, it's available at home, hardware in Canada. So that's a store we don't have here. Um, I love these side, sidebar conversations. They're so interesting. I forgot I was holding e, Ann Eastwood's um, pillow. But absolutely beautiful. Keep going. And I'm going to keep track of what you're saying. But of the Anne Eastwood things I have, and I have a few other things, it seems like she usually works in a five, which is quickly becoming my favorite cut. I thought this was exceptionally pretty. And I wondered if anybody had taken classes with her. She seems like an iconic teacher that I would love to find out more about. This is also one of hers that has that real tessellated feel to it. Look, I mean, right? It gets fish, it goes like this. Or does it? You know, it's impossible to say. It's tes it's so tessellated, I can't say. But you see what I mean about the tessellation. So this is a to be continued for next month. This will be like the February, the end of February, March class for sure. Um, the tessellating, because this is an amazing pattern. This is super Escher. What did I miss? Oh, my mom says, yes, the boat designs for quilting, but probably adaptable to hook or punch. You know, anything that you find is a quilt pattern, and I know that you know this already, but I'm going to say it anyway. You can adapt. Of course you can adapt. If it's a quilt pattern, it's a line pattern, you can adapt it. It's just a question of transferring it. What's your transfer method? Different conversation. Um, but absolutely you can adapt it and use it and enjoy it. Why shouldn't, why shouldn't you, right? All of these patterns, all of those, you know, when you go into thrift stores or church, whatever, uh, basement stores, more, more in the summer, and maybe not, maybe not this year, God forbid, but it wasn't last year or the year before, when they are open and you find these big piles, stacks of magazines that are like quilting magazines and they look dated, well, maybe they are dated, um, but they're filled with patterns because all of those older magazines always included lots of patterns. Some of them were pull out fold outs and some of them were just to scale with the grid over them. And then you would just do the thing that the kids do at school where you do a, a grid bigger according to how you, know, you want to size your piece and then you fill in the parts or you bring it to Staples to blow up. But all of those old magazines, so many of them um, that you get in these giant big lots, even on eBay, right? Because most people will ship media mail. 
I know you're not supposed to do stuff with advertisement, and that includes magazines, but I have very strong feelings that magazines that are either no longer in print or that none of the advertising is, is within the last 30 years up to date would work anyway. I feel like that is some kind of a moral exception, right? Um, but in any case, absolutely go to quilt patterns. And there aren't a lot of rug hooking stores. There aren't a lot of rug making stores. There are a lot of quilt stores. Um, this is one of the reasons I want to tap into this MCM, mid-century modern stuff. But also, you know, when you have that longing to go to a store and browse, and you're not a quilter, you can go to the quilt store, still expensive, but look for, you know, patterns of things that bargain stuff and things that just hit you right in the heart. And think about how you can adapt those patterns to rug hooking. Absolutely. Why not? Why not? Love that tessellated design. Me too. And you know what else um, I found? I got this this week. This was just a cool find on eBay. Just showing off all my junk before we look at our magazine. It is a. It was advertised as a bodkin. And for those of you that so you know that that word is a shape shifter. That is like a sci-fi shape shifter. Um, so it, there are so many things that qualify as bodkins. But basically, any uh, instrument with a point. So it, it, you know, you cast your you cast your rod out quite far or whatever, but your line. This really is to me a proddy hook, or at least it's going to be. Um, and it said that it, it was from 1915, right? I don't know if you can see the writing there. My fat hand in the way, not with my fat hand in the way. So it says 1915 on it. Yeah, it's hard to get it in focus because it's. It's weird and shiny, but it's a little piece of wood. It says, uh, it looks like somebody burnt it in there. Mr. J. Allen Barkus, Nickerson, Kansas. And then it says something like Reen or Reeve County, 1915. And I thought, isn't that a beautiful little tactile thing? It's got a dull point. So this is just another tool to add to my Prati collection of tools more of a pen hook size. So I'm used to using it in my palm, a real little tool. That's what I'm used to. I'm gonna try this and see if this works just as well. It's flatter on one side. It's not round all the way around. It's flatter this way, right? Like, so it's kind of it's kind of nice the way it feels. We'll see how it goes. But interesting, the things you can find when people make typos on eBay, right? So, all right, enough of that. Oh, you know what? I had a couple more that I think are both in Eastman's. I'm pretty sure anyway. I'm so ashamed of myself. You know, these are originally, they were from the same woman and almost everything she said, uh, had said, um, Anne Eastman, I'm sorry, Eastwood. What is wrong with me? On it. But I think this is probably a Pearl McGowan um, by uh, Jane McGowan, granddaughter. Another beauty here that I think she maybe was going to be turned into a pillow and is, is still going to be turned into a pillow, but by me this time. I thought that went real well with the other two. And then this one I thought was interesting, too. And again, this one is unfinished, but look at how pretty this is. I'm sure that this is Anne Eastwood. Um, and, you know, how can you tell? Just the way she shades, right? It's very distinctive. The light is just dreadful today, but it's just beautiful. It's not, it's not typically my colors, but when I saw it, I got started to get stomach cramps. So that's usually a sign that I need to go in for the kill. I thought that was so, so, so beautiful. I think this is probably another, oh, it says Frasier. Um, so that's a Frasier design. Oh, that's really cool, isn't it? Really pretty, so pretty. So interesting finds, amazing. Hey, Slapper, Dave, right? Dave, right? Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Good to see you. Little departure today, but you know, this conversation about crossing over into penny rugs and wool applique, I think is an important one, not just because you can do both techniques on the same piece, but it does make a nice change to kind of branch out and do something that's a little bit different, right? A little bit outside of your, what's the expression, Jay? Wheelhouse? Yeah. Yeah, wheelhouse. Outside of your wheelhouse. Um, is interesting and challenging and fun and just different because you can use a lot of your same supplies, right? If you're doing penny rugs and things, for at least the projects that I've done, I'm using either a regular needle or sometimes, sometimes depending on the project, I'm using a chenille needle or a doll's needle. Um, but I'm not using crazy equipment. I'm not, I'm not searching for things and ordering things online. So there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of commonality between all of these forms of rug making. And that's why I loved finding out about this issue of Crazy Quilt Magazine again. November 2021, 
wool crazy quilts and it says barbara nikki lee cv now she's the i've i sent her a friend request on uh facebook because that's the kind of stalker i am um and she's in what was it Plim plimpton massachusetts but the main article with this is her uh, photo is hers right so that's why her name is on the cover like that and there's many other people contributing to this particular issue and they're all uh contributing things that are so worthwhile and um thought thought provoking like i should have had a v8 that makes a lot of sense i can do that too right so this is just a cool magazine and we haven't looked at this one yet um there's a lot at the beginning they're they're referencing like uh, call outs shout outs like they do in rug cooking magazine and at the things they put out before so like postcards reader submissions from around the world um, doing crazy quilts with postcard images so format very similar to the format of the kind of magazines that we we cover often and then they go right into a section that's called tips and tricks for wool this time because this whole issue is about wool this is where the great crossover happens so there's different people showing their projects that are wool crazy quilt projects essentially wool applique right with a lot of extra stitches a lot of fancy work going on um and one of them said what did she say one of them was so cool um no that wasn't i mean it everything is cool but that wasn't what i was saying oh here we go now this is this hurts so this one page um this block here that's a wool applique block I'm going to come to the pennies in just a minute. Really cool, right? I like the shape of these trees up here in the holly, the little primitive house. Beautiful winter block, isn't it? Look at this square here. I mean, how sweet is that? I love the simple shapes. A little Santa, a little dove. So this block is by Mary Beard, B-E-A-R-D, and it's hints for working with wool. And she says, my wool crazy quilt, and that's the one I just showed you, is based on a book by... I call it, I'm calling it right now, Joanne Mullally. Does anybody have this book? And she says, it's called Wool Crazy. And she says, unfortunately, she only had one printing and it is out of print. Well, that is that is an understatement. It is out of print. It's like it never existed. I can see it there, but there's not one copy available on the entire interweb. I did that on purpose, but it's super frustrating. So if anybody has an extra copy of this book, I would love to buy it from you. I am so um, interested in this book because all I'm seeing are images of the cover. But um, anyway, that threw up a giant flag for me and made me think, maybe go on a wild goose chase that I did not have time for. But she says, however, most of the items in the first section of this quilt are original with only a few images from her book. So anyway, the reason I brought that up was because I wanted to bring up the book. Um, and certainly, if you have ideas for books that have been super inspiring for you that relate to wool applique or penny rugs, put them into the margin so everybody can see them, particularly if they are in print, so that we have the chance to, to grab them too and enjoy them as well, right? She may have a blog. You know, Colleen, she may. Oh, you have that book. I bet it's great, isn't it? Mm, I bet it's great. No, I am, su I am super happy for you. Um, I hope I can find it too. One of these days I will. I always do. Sooner or later, and hopefully sooner, it'll come along. Now, this is so cute too. This is another article by Beth Pyle. It's called Three Wool Quilts. This is Beth here. And again, I'm so sorry the light today is just dreadful. She looks so nice, doesn't she? So this is the one we're looking at first, this one here. And then I'll show you our other ones, and I'll just read you a little bit about what she wrote. This is our hearts one. Right, so these are fairly small wool applique quilts, but I thought this was so cute, and it really reson resonated with me. Um, the first one that's the crazy quilt one here, right? She writes, this one is called Grandma Ann's Quilt. And she says, hi, my name is Beth Pyle. I have lived on Long Island, New York, for 40 years. My family roots go back to Kansas. My interest in crazy quilting is from my paternal grandma. She made crazy quilt pillows out of scraps from sewing men's alterations. From, sew, from sewing men's alterations. I made the center of this quilt in 1973. I saved the block to one day finish it. In 2006, I did finish it. It's a 22 and a half by 23 and a half wall hanging. The fabrics used in the block are from wool clothing my grandma made for me for high school. This is a memory quilt made with love for my grandma. 
I think that is so sweet because I, lo I just love the term memory when people are referring to fabric that it's like family stuff or stuff from a dear one that is presumably not not here anymore um, and you're cutting up their clothing and using it for a beautiful project that will is an heirloom right that will be there forever um, so this is this is her version of that and I just think it is so um, heartwarming that she started it in 73 I was one year old at that point and uh, she finished it in 2006 because we all have done this. We have all done this. I have languishing projects like you can't imagine. We all do the same things. Karen says, try checking a Libras. I did. I did. I checked them. I checked Abe and Amazon. Um, it could be that it turns up again. Of course, I checked eBay. I checked everybody. I went I went nuts. And you know, I, I, don't, e I don't even know for sure that there's anything I could immediately use in that book. But as soon as someone says there's a book that you can't get your hands on, I think, oh, yes, I can. But this one, I just couldn't. I just couldn't. So this is just so, um, this is so cute. It's such a nice publication. It brings us right to the cover article, which I think is really where our interest is going to lie the most. Barbara Nikki Lee, L-E-E-C-V, S-E-A-V-E-Y, Crazy Quilts Embellished Wool Pennies. Now, this is so good. This is so good. So let me show you a picture of her. We'll get started that way. She's given the peace sign. Plimpton Mass, right? And it says Etsy store. Okay, Etsy shop Ravioli Dreams. And that's Ravioli, R-A-V-I-O-L-E-E. -E. All right, not an I at the end, an E-E -E at the end, because her I guess her middle name is Lee, L-E-E. -E. Uh, Ravioli Dreams. And she writes, ever since I was in junior high school, I have loved to stitch. I've stitched on pillowcases, blue jeans, cross-stitch designs, etc. And for the past 15 years, I've stitched many crazy quilt projects. Back in the late 90s, I started playing around with wool and created hundreds of little pincushions, hearts, and ornaments. Stitching on wool was so easy and so much fun as I got to explore tons of new stitches as well as new threads. As most of you know, I created my little shop, Ravioli Dreams, back in 2009. This little wool pincushion started it all. It was at the very beginning of my adventures into crazy quilting and dyeing lace. And this is the pincushion that started it all, the peach one there. Beautiful, little French knots at the bottom, little running stitch, very sweet. Started it all, that is a, an historic item right there. And then she says, in, in September of 2019, I was looking for something new to play with. I came across a wool penny challenge on Facebook and decided to jump in. The challenge was to make one wool penny a day between June 15th and Labor Day. Now that's, that's something of a commitment, isn't it? Now, I'm not saying I made one a day, but I did manage to make my 80. Once complete, I decided I would go for 100 and make it into a wall hanging. Still working on them. Most wool pennies that I have seen were simply stitched with various stitches and one to three different sizes of wool circles. I decided that my wool pennies would take on a life by adding a variety of embellishments. Now this is where it really crosses with the crazy quilt idea, isn't it? Um, and she says, when I first signed up for the wool penny challenge, one of the rules was that we needed to make a wooly. This little fellow is what I came up with and it's my favorite. I think we're all gonna love that little image, right? just a simple blanket stitch around that inner penny, and then some other little stitches, little French knots, a little applique um, sheep, and then you see this is like a little plastic, probably a button um, ladybug, right? So she's using embellishments. She, I'm gonna show you some of these pictures close up. I won't read the whole article because it might be something you wanna order. I ordered it from, again, Mag, Mag Cloud, M-A-G-C-L-O-U-D, and um, they sent it, it was $15, including shipping, and they sent it within the week, it came. And it's just a beautiful copy of any magazine. And when you go to Borders, uh, not Borders, oh my God, Borders. When you go to um, Joann's or Michael's or any of those anyway, every magazine is $15 anyway. You might as well have the one that you really want, right? So she started doing, I mean, she went on a bender, and she did, I'll try to show as many close-up as I can, some really exquisite, applique pennies so this is a real crossover 
And you know how I get a bit crazy, like, you know, when I when I talk about penny rugs, I like it to be a rug that has some pennies on it. Otherwise, like, I, I prefer personally to refer to it as a wool applique piece because, um, I mean, the, the penny is something specific, isn't it? But these truly are pennies with really creative and intricate wool applique centers. You see all the little brass bindings and little things that she's added, plastic and beads. And now that we know she dyes her own lace, be looking for that too. She does a lot of ribbon work. You know, the little French ribbons that people, there's woolly right up top in the corner. I mean, she just did, it looks like she's uh, cutting some lace too, right? She's cutting it just to take little motifs out. But isn't it beautiful? So different, isn't it? And I mean, one a day, I mean, one a day is not a lot, right? But it depends on what else is going on in your life, of course, always does. But it is a fairly manageable thing to think about making one of these a day, right? It's not, it's not outside the realm of possibility in terms of uh, time expenditure. But again, every day is a, is, yeah, is a bit of a pipe dream. But um, I like the idea of this challenge. And I can easily see how if you set your mind to making a bunch of these pennies and you had it in your mind that you were going to do something a little bit different, like appliquing the center of each penny, I could see how you would go down the rabbit hole in a fatal way with that. I mean, can't, can't you see how easy that would be? One foot on the banana peel, the other one down the rabbit hole, and off you go for months or years. Um, but she also gives a really sweet and interesting wool penny tutorial. So let me walk through this a little bit. She's showing some of the supplies she's using here. So cut circles, right, graduated circles. These are things that Colleen carries too. Different kinds of embroidery floss, right, the DMC, but there's also other kinds of uh, flosses that you can think about with different lusters, right, um, different sort of uh, amount of threads making up the gauge. But she's showing you some of the supplies she uses. Uh, the solid felt, but also the color um, changing felt, right? It's like mottled. And then she's saying, look around for some ideas if you are going to make your own templates for penny quilts. Um, she's using one of these old spindles, right? She's using top and bottom and a little coin to get these graduated sizes. She wants three different sizes. So she's showing us some of the tools that she's using, some of the bling that she uses. Oh, Jennifer says, the wool penny challenge on face the Facebook group is a lot of fun. Many great photos for inspiration. Oh, man. Jennifer, you told me about this book, right? Did you did you tell me about this book? I'm losing. You know I've lost my mind. It's gone. I'm not even going to pretend like it's future tense. It's past tense. Um, but, you know, I'm going to have to have I'm going to have to have a link to that because I don't know this Will Penny Challenge. Colleen, do you know this Will Penny Challenge? I've not I've not heard of it. I'm super intrigued and I'm kind of dying to see all these photos. Um, but she's showing us all the different kinds of things it's her process, right? All these inspiring things that she does. And she's saying, you know what else? Look, I'm going to make penny rug, penny rug um, lids for like my candles. You could do it for preserves, jar, whatever. What a nice gift that would be, right? You can something and then you make a nice wool applique top because she's probably using the lid as the template, right? So it's exactly the right size. And then, of course, it will be the right size. And what a beautiful thing also for the top of the candle, but giving some ideas about cutting templates, different materials that we don't immediately associate with, pe with traditional penny rugs. Now these aren't traditional penny rugs. It is a cross with a historic style, and that's the crazy quilt, right? The Victorian crazy quilt, but it's not a traditional rug style. And it's interesting and exciting when we have these crossovers. So this whole, uh, oh good Jennifer, I just couldn't find the email. I searched and searched, I couldn't find the email. Um, thank you so much. It turns out it's a great magazine. I really appreciate it. And as soon as I have time, I'm going to look through uh, MagCloud's other magazines that they carry because this was a very easy and fast way to get a back issue. And sometimes that's a thing, as you know. Colleen says, yes, the Penny Wool Challenge is a very good group on Facebook. Lots of inspiration for stitchers. Oh, God. So that's something to think about. Go onto your Facebook if you're a Facebook user and check out the Wool, the wool Penny. Is it just Wool Penny Challenge? Interesting. That is interesting. I must be living in a black hole or something. I missed out on the Will Penny Challenge. I would love to jump into that in a month, maybe. 
lots of articles in this magazine that are so much fun. Kathy Billings writes an article called Wool Applique Tutorial, Bird on a Flowering Vine. And she's doing wool applique with her machine in some cases. Wait. Every article in this particular issue, November 2021, is about penny rugs and wool applique. It is about wool. Right, so she's doing things like that really, really pretty. And you know, this one really struck me because we always think about, um, at least when we're using wool for uh, hooking projects and such, you know, I always think about, she, she's got solid wool on like a cotton sort of batik or marbled fabric, right? I always think the opposite. I always think modeled wool, but in this case, it's solid wool on a mixed cotton background. And why shouldn't you? Because if you are doing wool applique, then now you have opened the floodgates to all of these other materials that we love that don't hook well, like batiks, like all different quilting cottons, all of those with prints that you don't want to cut up. You don't want to do that to them. This is a great idea using your wool to do applique on the surface of other fabrics that you have been loath to cut up to this point, right? another another opportunity a window opens so this whole thing is amazing I mean it's there's there's patterns in here it's not an enormous magazine but it's very cool Marlenia Richardson a little bit of silly she's from Wilhelmina Austin Texas her supervisor oh no um, Marlenia she's from Austin Texas Richardson and her supervisor her supervisor is a long-haired dachshund that's Wilhelmina how cool is that and she's doing stuff like this, which I think is just, come on. Right, so sure, you know, a lot of people working with a sewing machine, combining wool applique and cotton fabrics. Perfect cross, isn't it? Best of both worlds. But she's doing beautiful stuff like this. I'm always looking for things for the kitchen, right? Interesting things like this for the kitchen. Kind of scallion or the pearl onion and the carrots. So pretty. So, um, so wildly embellished it's exciting and this article you know i'm gonna have to read this again because she keeps making references to sue spargo and i have some sue spargo books but i haven't delved in there i haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet and i know there's a lot to say about sue spargo i know there's gonna be people out there that go oh she's my favorite i have all of her books i want to hear all that because this is the next thing for me is researching this whole wool applique world those would be great badges on berets oh you are so right that reminds me of the old girl scout badges on the sash that's exactly what they look like isn't it uh-oh i'm starting to brainstorm here now because we might be onto some we might be onto some kind of we're not going to do the wool penny challenge of course because someone's already doing that but wow that's got me thinking that's got me feeling all nostalgic about badges now and the scouts and all that stuff Ooh, let's see how we can spin that one and, and um, work it into a, uh, a challenge or a project or a design or a something something. I love that. Jennifer, I figured, right? Sue Spargo, S-P-A-R-G-O. Uh, um, this whole article, at least what I remember of my Sue Spargo books, very much in the style of, but by uh, Lydia Aguayo. Ag, 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 Sorry, I am awful. Agua, A-G-U-A-Y-O. I, I know it sounds lyrical and beautiful, but I just accidentally crucified it. Absolutely beautiful girl, beautiful work. And this article is working with wool, Sue Spargo process. Uh, but this just is crazy eye candy to me. I mean, this is so folky and fantastic. Uh, subjects that we are really used to seeing in rug hooking, right? Different kinds of birds. But now using the addition of wool pennies, right, right on the wings there and in the background. How fun is that? Using a little bit of quilting fabric in the background. True applique, right? It, applique is collage. Like that's the literal translation of the word. Hello in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Design a badge that illustrates where we all live. Uh-oh! Sorry, that's the, that's the voice I use when the dog is peeing somewhere. Um, that is, I, 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 need to, I need to fasten my seatbelt. That is a great idea. I absolutely love that. Design a badge that represents where we all live. I love that. 
I love that. I'm not going to let go of that. I'm going to, let's put that, do you want to put that, are you in the Facebook group too? Karen, you're in the Facebook group, right? Did you, let me know if you want to put that up there as an idea or if you want me to help, which you can absolutely make it your own idea. I don't need to have my nose in everything. Um, but if you want, if you end up wanting help or you don't feel like doing it or have the time for it, I definitely want to promote this idea because this would be a beautiful idea for us to all represent where we're from. And if we could share our designs for our pennies that we design within the group and also I can put them on the blog for people who don't use Facebook, then we would all have access to this huge, evolving, growing sort of library of badges that represent us all and therefore connect us all. That would be a beautiful project for us in 2022. I absolutely love it. I think that is a great idea. Let me know what you want to do with that. Um, I am so crazy this week, I can't breathe, but there is the light at the end of the tunnel and I hope it isn't like, you know, to heaven. I hope it's actually to another phase of life on earth if I get that far. Okay, great, thank you, definitely, please. I'm doing it, I'm doing it without a doubt. So more of this kind of thing, right? And I don't mean to diminish it because this is my favorite kind of thing in all of the world. I absolutely love repeats. You know I, you know I do because I constantly am talking about multiples. Little simple, very folky flower arrangement in a pot. Doesn't get any better than that. Using wool pennies, right? As like the stamen and things coming out of the flowers. And then having the opportunity to do different little stitches within the flowers, very simple padula type shapes, beautiful autumn themed one, fancy stitches with that crossover to crazy quilting. I mean, this is good, isn't it? Bring in focus if I can, there we go. And I can see the ribbons flying. I mean, it's just, I mean, if you saw this in a store, wouldn't you just go nuts? I mean, I would just go absolutely nuts. Really good, really good work. That sounds wonderful. Post a link to the blog, I will, absolutely. I know there's a lot of people who aren't on Facebook, so I'll make sure that this project is accessible um, to everybody too. Karen, you're a genius, you're a genius. I absolutely love that. Isn't it great? You know, this book I've been reading by, uh, listening to by Jenny Doan, who, did, who, who founded and her company is the Missouri Star Quilt Company, right? I'm just, I'm so lost in this autobiography of hers because it's so beautiful. But she's constantly talking about making connections and finding beauty in, in unexpected places. And this just reminded me of that. We constantly brainstorming here on the sidebar and making all these connections. And we come up with these great ideas. It's just the way life should be, particularly at the beginning of January where we need things to cling onto. So I'm highly recommending this book. I won't show you all of the articles, but it is, oh, Halloween Cat. Uh, Lisa Boney, B-O-N-I, or Bonnie, Longmont, Colorado. Um, so cute. Based on the Le Chat Noir um, French cat poster that I'm sure we've all seen. Right, Kirsten's not on today, but this would get her. And turning it into a crazy quilt pattern. Let me show you again, because this is going to make a lot of sense as a sort of template. And then she's appliquing the Le Chat Noir cat. Isn't that fantastic and you know what makes it that cat of course is those eyes I mean the silhouette is the silhouette but those eyes let me bring in focus it's really evocative of that poster isn't that great so lots of nice projects in here November 2021 crazy quilt magazine crazy for cats oh boy Kirsten I know you're gonna watch this later this might be the article for you a design that's all these different panes um, crazy quilt panes and there's some cats in there Fantastic, huh? Beautiful stitches. So, yeah, one whole uh, issue devoted to, don't get me going, there's a lot more, there's a lot more in here. They do a bed rug at the end. I have to show you this. It's a crazy quilted bed rug, but we talk so much about historic bed rugs. Here's one. I mean, isn't that fantastic? Probably go over a cannonball bed or a four, four poster, that kind of a thing. Astonishing. And you know, Let's not get started. Let's not get started. But different kinds of ads for different supplies than we see in our rug hooking magazines, right? Talk about rabbit hole. You open this, this is like a contemporary magazine. Treenway, I'm sure, has still got a great website up. I'm gonna will myself not to 
visit every advertiser that's in this magazine because they're different ones than we're used to and we can use their materials whether you're doing wool applique penny rugs rug hooking punch needle you can use their stuff you can absolutely use fiber in what you do so highly recommend jennifer thank you so much at the end of the book they right on the back cover is this wonderful by lisa bonnie again uh, copyright 2021 stitch book so some stitches right i'm not seeing the main stitches like obviously French knot and um, um, uh, basket, uh, the basket stitch and all that stuff, but I think these are more decorative, yeah. Oh, I get it, there are different people who've contributed to this issue giving their favorite stitch. I'm getting it now, because there's a name under each stitch. Very cute, huh? There's Mary Beard, we saw her. We saw Beth Pyle, right, with her grandmother's memory thing right here. That's a cool stitch. Little French knots in unexpected places, isn't it? Up, down, up, down, up, down. Very cool. So interesting things that we can tap into. We are flexible people. We know how to twister. We can cross over into other genres, right? And it'll be not twice as much fun. It'll be more than that. It'll multiply. The fun will multiply many times over because it is so much fun to try something different and figure out how you can use the best of so many different techniques in the project that you're working on right now or the next project. Um, and just having that in the back of your mind, like our badges, having a project in the back of your mind, no matter what the weather is like, what the day is like, what the traffic is like, what the news is like, having something in the back of your mind that gives you that cozy, warm feeling is the only thing at this time of year. So thank you so much, Karen, for thinking of that. That was absolutely brilliant. Jennifer says, oh, Jennifer says, speaking of cats, did you get the email from the Honey Beehive rug hooking about their Lois Wayne patterns. No, I didn't. Lois Wayne. No, I didn't. And I belong to that. I'm um, so fun. I just watched that movie about him on Amazon with Benedict Cumberbatch. How how am I how am I not knowing this? I yeah. Just you just mentioned one of my favorite actors too. By the way, has anybody been watching the show Staged? It's so funny. Another great British show, Staged. It's super good. I am gonna have to chase that one, Jennifer, for sure. Absolutely. And no, I won't forget to post in the blog, too. It won't be today or tomorrow. It'll probably be over the weekend. Um, and Jennifer says, I'd love to hear what you think of those patterns. I'm going to look at those patterns, and I will give you, I'm sure I'm going to love them, obviously. I would I'd never say anything negative about someone else's work, but I'm probably really going to love them. So I'll say real specific feedback as soon as I get a chance to look at them. There are lots of embroidered border videos on YouTube. There must be. I'm glad that you said that. There must be. There ought to be, and there must be. And those are so helpful because working on a book project and showing stitches, um, you know, phase by phase is one thing. And some people do learn that way, but other people learn by watching a video. And then some people learn by showing them in person, and there's no way around that. And it's just the way it is. We all learn differently. Um, that's the problem with school, isn't it? We all learn differently. But um, yeah, it's really, it, it's, it's been, that I've been very thoughtful about videos versus still photos versus illustrations versus photographs of still photos. And all of these things and thinking, you know, what, what's, what's the best for the most people? You can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. And YouTube is a great resource for videos. Um, I'm really hoping that this year, at least with rug videos, I can do like one a day, very short videos. Time has not permitted so far. But hopefully that's something on the horizon because they are so helpful, free, and accessible for people who are just approaching the craft and they need to get their confidence buoyed up a little bit before they start spending money and really getting going. Those videos are priceless for bridging that gap, you know. Uh, I will email you for sure. April says, what is the name of the movie? Uh, Jennifer said the movie was, yeah, what, what is the name of the movie, Jennifer? Um, did, did you mention it? Am I not seeing it? The, uh, the Electrical Life of Lewis Wayne. There we go. There we go. Is it something you can watch on the TV or is it in the movie theater right now? God, I sound so cool, don't I? You can watch it on the television set or is it only in the pictures? That sounds great, though. All right, good. Well, good. I think I'm caught up with all of your comments. So you know what? Today is Wednesday. I won't see you tomorrow. I usually take Thursdays off, and this week I, I definitely have to take tomorrow off to get going on work a little bit more. But um, I will be back with you on Friday, and we will have a wonderful cocktail night together. That'll be 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what we're going to do yet, but I will figure it out, and it will be 
fun. So that's something to look forward to, too. In the meantime, you can reach me at ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. Our Facebook group is Rug Cooking and Punch Needle Club. Colleen, huge thank you for being on today, for answering so many questions. Super helpful and forthcoming. Check out Colleen's uh, pages, too. Colleen, did you put your links and stuff in the side? Because Colleen's got, like, Instagram, Etsy, uh, an excellent informational blog with tons of videos. Colleen, put your stuff up if you can right there. I should have had that ready um, if she's still on. But, yeah, she's got tons of good stuff, too. So, all right, we'll look forward to Friday. And if you have any ideas for me for something that you would like to see, put Lewis Wayne in your YouTube search. All right, that's a good tip. Yeah, if you have an idea for Friday, if there's something specifically that I have been remiss in mentioning or covering, let me know because I can always use some ideas. My brain isn't working too well right now. Mom says, what well, wonderful energy. <laughs> You're always so positive and sweet. Thumbs up. Thank you. Thumbs up, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. We're catching up. Okay, you are so welcome. I'm so happy to see you all. You make my day when I come on and we can brainstorm like this. And now I'm going to be thinking about those penny badges. So we'll all be, we'll all be running off on a tear. 